Hey guys, welcome back to Blind Strike Exotics. I'm John, and today I'm gonna start a series, and it's not gonna be every week or maybe even every month, but as I get questions from you guys, um, I'm gonna call it like, what do I use? Um, I do get a lot of questions about what do I use for an incubator, what do I use for my racks, what do I use for this, that, and, and, and the other thing. And today I'm gonna talk about my racks and focus on that. Um, I'm gonna tell you what I have kind of figured out over the last two years, what works for me, why I made the decisions I have made, and then we'll go from there. So I started off, my first adult racks were from, they were from, from Sea Serpents. They were their uh, 70 series tubs. They come in like stacks of three, and they work really well. Uh, everything fits in there perfectly well. They're the same size tubs as, you know, these, these 70 these 70 series tubs that you get from Freedom Breeder or ARS, same exact thing. They're just their own, their own make. Works great. Um, the only reason I don't use those anymore <clears throat> is because like this rack here, the 7030 from ARS, it can fit 30, 30 tubs in it and a lot more of a confined space than you ever would with those, those uh, Sea Serpent ones because the Sea Serpent ones only come in a stack of three and that takes up a lot more space. So that's the only reason I got rid of those. So the Sea Serpents racks for the adults work well if you're only gonna have three or four or five or six adults, you stack them you know, on top of each other. But they don't work if you're gonna have a large collection. <clears throat> so we'll get into the ARS racks here in a couple minutes. The next thing I moved up to were these Reptile Basics or Vivarium Electronics VE6 racks. And I've spoken about this before, but the reason I like these, and I can actually show you right here, is because they take hatchling tubs, these kind of bigger grow out tubs, and they also take these tubs, which would fit, um, you know, a good size adult male or a female that's probably under a thousand grams. These tubs are great for that, and I'm actually going to probably keep these around when I finally upgrade everything to ARS for quarantine and for uh, like spillover. If I have too many hatchlings, they don't fit in my ARS racks. That's what I'm gonna um, keep these racks for. The biggest downside to these racks is they don't have cup holders. And as you can see in this tub, basically what you have to do to get these deli cups, and, and your snakes will tip over the deli cups all over the time. You have to buy these little PVC couplings from Home Depot or Lowe's, and these are like the four inch couplings. And I couldn't find any that were like really shallow. So I had to buy like the one, they're like double double this size, maybe this high, and I had to cut them all in half with a, with a hacksaw. And it's time consuming, it's a pain in the butt, and they still find ways to spill the water over with these. The other issue is, as you can see, there's not a lot of clearance here between where the top of the tub is and how you have to cut these in there. So the negative to these tubs is they are kind of shallow, especially for these bigger ones. It's not as big of a deal with like a smaller snake, but once you start getting to like the adult males and the thousand gram females, it's kind of troublesome. So I probably won't be using this rack going forward for anything other than like the smaller grow out snakes or for a hatchling spillover. Um, the issue with the hatchling racks is you can't fit those couplings in here. And as you can see in this tub, this is what I come down to every morning is that somehow I push, I push these deli cups all the way to the bottom of these tubs every day, fill them up with water. Somehow they end up all the way up here, like in midair with the snakes pushing them around. They're tipped over. And as you can see uh, from the condensation build up in the front and from the paper in here, this paper is soaking wet because this snake dumped out all of this water. So what I'm going through every single morning with these racks for the hatchlings, and this wasn't a big issue last year because I didn't have as many hatchlings, but at this point I have gone, I don't know, maybe up to 70 hatchlings at this point that have been in and out of these tubs, is that I can't spend time every morning having to pull out wet paper and refill water bowls. It's also a waste of water in paper, um, but it's also time consuming and it's stuff that I don't need to be doing every day because I have to actually take care of snakes instead of just cleaning up messes. Um, so 
unless you were able to find like small ceramic bowls for each one of these tubs, this isn't really effective if you're doing it on a large scale. If you're just gonna have a single rack and you're able to buy those little ceramic bowls that'll fit in there that they can't tip over, then these would probably be perfect for you. My only complaint is that there's no way to fit a deli cup in there. So, and I wasn't gonna go out and buy 100 ceramic bowls for these. Again, because you're trying to minimize your, your cost on this as well. So what I ended up doing is I'm gonna actually switch over to an ARS hatchling rack. Um, the other kind of thing that kind of stinks with these is that they don't have any um, air holes in these tubs. So you either have to go through and drill, drill some air holes into them, or you need to, uh, you know, use, I use a soldering iron sometimes because it just makes it cleaner and there's no, you know, plastic residue all over the place. And that's time consuming as well. So these, you have to build these racks, but on top of that, they don't come necessarily ready. You're gonna have to buy couplings to put your deli cups in, or you have to buy more expensive water bowls. Other than that, they're great. Like I said, I'm probably gonna end up keeping all, these are all, uh, each one of these racks, they're called VE6s because there's six levels in each one of them. <clears throat> so I actually have six of these racks here. I'll probably have, end up keeping them at least four of them maybe all of them again for hatchling spillover or for uh, like quarantine tubs in a different room so i like the the reptile basics ve6s but you need to be aware that they take a little bit of work and you're probably going to buy more expensive water bowls or have to cut pvc couplings to fit your deli cups in it so that they're not constantly spilling water which kind of moves us up to the ars racks and as far as I know, the only big difference between these and the Freedom Breeders are the Freedom Breeders are all stainless steel. And the ARS racks, you can actually buy like their original stainless steel ones or you can buy their hybrids. As far as I'm aware, the only difference between the hybrid and the originals are that these joints between all of the levels are plastic. And I don't know if the... There are the little, you're not gonna be able to see it. There's like the little plastic, let me pull this out. There's like the little plastic shelves that go above the snake tubs to keep the snakes in that also have the air holes. I don't know if those are metal in the non-hybrid version or not, but they're plastic in this, which doesn't make a difference anyways. So I'm not, gonna really get into the whole hybrid versus the original thing or the freedom reader versus the ARS because to me they're all the same thing. These are fantastic. These are what the professionals use and they use them for a reason. Having these um having these cup holders in here are literally a lifesaver and you don't even have to buy them with the cup holders in there in the tubs. I choose to do that. It makes a life a lot easier. I really don't see the reason not to have them because then you just have to put, make extra work for yourself without the cup holders. I actually purchased an ARS hatchling rack that you know is doing a couple weeks whenever they get caught up, which um, I think it comes with 65 tubs and I think 10 or 12 levels. I don't remember, maybe 12 levels. I actually was able to purchase another level so it'll be able to fit 70 total hatchlings in it um, because of how my ceilings are and these things are fantastic they have uh really nice heat panels on the back i don't know if you're able to see these but they're like nice uh metal heat panels you can buy them so they're insulated and that they're a little longer than the normal ones so you're not using heat tape they are constructed very well they do come um those plastic toppers that fit above the tubs come with i think 20 percent air holes um, and you can put more air, air holes in there if, if you'd like to. You can buy clear or gray tubs. I like the gray tubs, it just looks cleaner to me. You can buy them with or without cup holders in the tubs. This is the 7030, which is for the adults. This is the 5540, which is for your adult males and the females that you're growing out and your smaller females. And they are terrific. They make life a lot easier. They are expensive, but if you're doing this on a large scale, I recommend just biting the bullet, buying these professional racks, and believe me, you will never look back. They're the, I say this and every time I mention this in a video, the best investment into the 
infrastructure in, in the business is buying these ARS racks. So whether you go with ARS or Freedom Breeder, um, you know, I can't say anything about Freedom Breeder. I know they're probably a fantastic company. I've only purchased ARS because they do come a little less expensive because of the hybrid versions. <clears throat> and you, you get to fully assemble these. I think when you buy the Freedom Breeders, I think each level is like fully welded together. So you don't have to like build any of this. You still have to stack it when it gets to you, but it is fully built. Other than that, this you actually have to fully build the whole thing. You have to put all the screws and all the guide rails. So it, it takes a little more work. You're, it's gonna, you're gonna spend a couple hours building them, but they are literally the best investment I made into uh, my company and for, for my <laughs> for my sake of keeping time down, not having to clean out wet snake tubs. If you can see the fronts of these these hashling tubs, all these ones that have a ton of condensation on the front, those are all the ones that they most likely spilled water out this morning. So all of these are full, all of those are full. Uh, these are the ones getting shipped out. These are the ones getting shipped out. And I have one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven of these hatchlings out of probably thirty, so maybe a third of these snakes that dumped over their water bowls last night. So that means I have to go take eleven pieces of paper and go waste those again. I have to go fill up eleven more water bowls, and it's a lot of work every single day to have to do that. And sometimes it happens more than once a day. So having something with a more sturdy, with a cup holder in it, is perfect or you're gonna have to go spend more money to get more expensive water bowls in there. So I chose to go the route of, all right, I'm gonna have probably at least 70 hatchings at a time going forward. And the ARS racks are, for me, are perfect. They're professional. They're built extremely well. They look nice. And so that's what I'm doing. So the other rack that I have um, is an, uh, animal plastics rack that has uh, like a similar size tub to these, like the grow out or adult male tubs. I don't know, I guess they're 28 quart maybe. Now, I didn't buy it, I bought it secondhand, but it has the heat cable instead of the heat tape. And I absolutely hate that. The other thing I hate about that is they come with tubs. Uh, they don't come with tubs. You have to buy the tubs secondhand and they don't fit in there very well. And the tubs that at least this comes with have feet instead of having a flat bottom. And it always seems to get stuck where the heat cable is in the back. So you have to like, like kind of like Jimmy how to get it in there. So I don't like that rack. It's also, it's also 12 high. So it's really tall and kind of awkward to move. Uh, also does not come with wheels. And again, I don't know if you can customize all that separately later. Um, but the rack I have, I'm not happy with it. I do not like the heat cable because instead of like the heat tape is four or five inches wide, the heat cable is maybe an inch wide, which doesn't give a very big hot spot for the snakes either. I think, and I've never had an issue with the heat tape shorting out. People have said they have issues with them catching on fire. I've never had that issue. It can't be too common because I know a lot of people use it. I think the heat cable is supposed to be a little safer but it does not provide a very big hotspot for the snakes in my opinion. So I, I'm not a big fan of that. If you have the option to get heat tape or heat cable in your rack, I'd probably choose heat tape. Just make sure that you're safe with it. Make sure you have it on a surge protector or something in case you know fire were to happen. Um, but so I'm not a big fan of that. I have previously used the sea serpents adult racks, which I liked. They're just, too big when you're when you have a collection the size of mine it's probably okay if you have three to six adults or maybe up to 12 or you just have two stacks of them but they will take up way too much space if you have a ton of adult females the reptile basics the six racks that are i guess produced by vivarium electronics are fantastic but you do have to kind of put air holes in them you do have to build these but they don't take very long after you build the first one they have three different size tubs, which are fantastic for mixing and matching, but you're probably gonna have to either buy really expensive, heavy water bowls or buy PVC pipe and cut it to fit your deli cups in there so that your snakes are constantly spilling out water. And the ARS racks are top of the line, my favorite snake product. So these, if you're, if you're, if you're gonna be 
building a big collection or if you already have a ton of snakes and you're wondering whether or not you should buy one of these racks buy it do not look back the 5540 is probably good for most snakes you have um you know princess here obviously that girl is not going to fit inside of the 5540 but i do have let's see some females that are around 14 1500 grams this girl is in shed but as you can see she has a ton of room in there she's probably maybe 1400 grams at this point i think you you can probably fit females up to, up to 2000 grams in there most likely comfortably anything bigger than that has to go in the 70 30. so most people's snakes are going to fit in the 55 40 and you can also fit more tubs in it so i'd probably start there and you can fit your adult males in there you can fit a lot of your adult females in there and i even have some of my grow outs in here at this point because they fit in here pretty well this girl honey is always looking for food she's i think around 70 800 grams i put her in there when she was around 600. i put the extra hide in there for them to make them feel a little more comfortable because it is a little big for her but she is thriving in there she is comfortable and i moved a couple of her um couple of my other grow outs in there too recently and they're all still feeding well so start with the 5540 if you're thinking about it if you have a bunch of snakes in that weight range and believe me you will not second guess it you will not look back it's, it's a pretty big expense but it's well worth it so that is what i use for my housing for my racks and hopefully this was uh informative to you thanks for stopping by